Welcome back to the Proverbs 31 Ministries podcast, where we share biblical truth for any girl in any season. I am your host, Megan Ryan, and if you're joining us on YouTube, we are excited you're here. If you're just tuning in, we are in the middle of a four-part prayer series. Um, Our last episode, which was episode one, we talked about ways that we can kind of complicate prayer, and there are actually ways we can uncomplicate it. And so today's episode two, if you missed episode one, make sure you go back and listen. But I'm going to welcome my friends back. I'm here with Shay Hill. Shay. Hello, Megan. Tell us what you do at Proverbs 31. I am the content manager for Lisa Turkers at Proverbs 31 Ministries. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. Thanks. And then Ashley Jackson. Hi. What do you do at Proverbs? I am the senior social media coordinator. So all the social media media things. We are thankful for that. That's amazing. Yes. Um, Ashley is actually going to be giving us our teaching today. And I'm excited to hear from you because uh, I know you in real life. And (laughs) when I need prayer for something, you are somebody that I immediately want to text and say, please pray for me because I know that it's something that you have a lot of experience with. And so I'm going to just go ahead and hand it over to you to teach us about prayer. All right, great. Well, I am very passionate about prayer, so I'm probably going to get really excited talking about this. So we'll just go with that. Yes, I'm ready. (laughs) Don't hold back. That's amazing. Um, But the most basic definition of prayer is simply talking to God. I think sometimes we want to overcomplicate it. And of course, there's the holiness of God and all those things. But if we think about who we talk to in our everyday lives, there's different levels of relationships that we have with people and who we talk to. So if we go to the coffee shop, we're talking to the barista. And we might talk to our coworker at work, or we're talking to our neighbor as we get our mail. And those are brief and passing conversations. Mm -hmm. But then you have your deep conversations. And if you're married, that might be your spouse. Um, If you're not married, maybe that's like a best friend or even maybe your mom or your dad. And these are our closest friends and we trust them. They're the people that we can be ourselves with. And they are the ones that we're going to go to when we're in trouble. So the thing that we need to know about different relationships is that we have different access to different people because of the depth of that relationship. Mm -hmm. And these deep relationships do not happen overnight. They are developed over time. And we don't have the same expectation that we would for a barista as we would for our best friend or for our spouse because the level of relationship is different. So We would also not think of like, I have to talk to my best friend in order to check off a box. Mm -hmm. We get to talk to our best friend. We're excited to talk to our best friend. It's a privilege to talk to them and really like tell them everything that's going on in our lives because we trust them, because we know that they care about us. And it's because of the consistency in one another's lives that it's a privilege. And this is the kind of relationship that God wants us to have with him. It's a relationship where we talk to him about anything and all the things that are on our hearts every single day as often as possible. So for me, my prayer journey started when I was 14 years old. (laughs) And if I'm honest, let me tell you how it actually started. Um, I had a big crush on (laughs) on a guy. I relate. (laughs) And so I started prayer journaling and I would just write in there about how cute he was. I was like talking to the Lord, like he's so cute. I'm pretty sure we should get married and you should make it happen. I was 14. I didn't know what I was saying, but it was a way I feel like the Lord established that relationship of talking to him about literally anything. And Throughout the years, I have all these prayer journals now stored in my garage, just like, I don't even know. One day we went through them and my husband was like, seriously, maybe you should get rid of those. (laughs) But I can't, you know, because it's like a record of your relationship. And there were times when I had a lot to say and I would journal pages and pages and then there would be like a paragraph and I didn't have a lot to say. Mm -hmm. Or there are pages like stained with tears Mm -hmm. or scribbles from scratching things out because I was so frustrated, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And times when I couldn't tell the Lord as as much as possible that I was so thankful for the things that he had done in my life and the prayers that I got to see him answer, just like I would look back on a week or two and think, wow, like he's listening. He Mm -hmm. cares about those things. And this is a beauty of a relationship with God. And I think prayer is the way we cultivate that relationship and we grow and we learn to trust him. And he's the one that has seen every high and every low of mine, even more than my husband or my best friend or all those things. Like he's literally been with us in every single moment. Mm -hmm. And this is prayer. And I don't know about you guys, but I want to have a vibrant, powerful prayer life where I'm seeing things happen in my life that I know 
that if God was not intervening in this situation, it would not be possible. Mm -hmm. Where it's so clear, it's him that's doing this and not me. So that begs the question, how do we get this powerful prayer life? And what does scripture teach us about it? Mm -hmm. Doesn't God know everything? So why should we have to pray about anything at all? But I love this quote by A.W. Tozer. And he said, God waits to be wanted. And I think that's so interesting and good to think about that sometimes we think God is indifferent to the min- like little things in our life. And I don't think he is. I think he really cares about the things that concern us. And sometimes we think we only pray about the big, miraculous um, healings, which of course are great. And we do want to pray about those things. But sometimes I just really need him to know that like my, my feelings are hurt. Yeah. Like, would you just encourage me and like, care for me in this in this moment and so to invite him in to every aspect of our lives and there are actually 51 if not more scriptures that tell us to ask which I think is so exciting because why would God bother to tell us to ask so many times if he didn't really mean it you know and I know there's been so many times when I feel disappointed because God has not answered the prayer the way that I wanted him to. And sometimes we start basing what we pray about on our past experiences. And I know we're going to really get into that some more about, you know, when prayer is disappointing. Mm. But the way I want to look at prayer is I'm going to pray according to God's ability. And according to Ephesians 3.20, it says that he can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we could ask think or imagine. And girls, I can ask, think, and imagine so much. (laughs) Yes. So imagine more than that, you know, like he is able to do that. And I want to believe that. I don't want to pray in doubt. I want to pray according to what he says he can do, even if he doesn't always do that for me. Right. You know, so prayer is our ability as fragile and weak humans, because we know ourselves, we know we have nothing to experience the almighty power of the living God. So how can we have these powerful prayer lives? I just want to give us a few examples from scripture itself of people who prayed crazy things, because I, if you know me in person, you know, I I pray crazy stuff. Um, half of the stuff I'm praying, I will never tell people because it is just like, oh, this is going to be between me and the Lord. And maybe some of these situations, I don't know. Obviously, we found out about them. Sorry, Joshua, if this was supposed to be private. But I want to read um, this example. And this is from Joshua. And it's in Joshua 10, 12 through 14. And he says, it says, at that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still at Gibeon, and the moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Um, That was bold. (laughs) I don't think I realized he prayed that. Yeah. I think I think about like the sun and the moon stood still, but I didn't realize Joshua asked for that to happen. Yeah. Which is like really cool to think like, okay, like, I don't know that I'm going to pray that and the Lord's going to answer. But in that circumstance, the Lord did answer that. That was a bold prayer. And I don't know. I Sometimes when I read scripture, I wonder, like, do they know God would answer so clearly? Or were they just doing this on faith? Because that's how we're approaching prayer. We don't know if he has a different solution. But maybe just have the boldness to pray something crazy and just see if God would do that. So the next verse is about Elijah, and this is in 1 Kings 17, 1. And it says, Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. Now, that does not seem to be a prayer, (laughs) but it then tells us in James later on, and I'm going to turn to that, um, in James 5, 16, It says, the prayer of a righteous person has great power at its working. It says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. And I think I love that it says to us in this James verse that Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours. Mm -hmm. And he prayed something bold, and God He was audacious. I love thinking of prayer with audacity. 
ha- you know, that's kind of a common term that we're saying these days, the audacity, yeah. <laughs> the audacity of people, right. <laughs> you know, and I wouldn't like the Lord to be like the audacity of that prayer, mm. but also to think that he knows that I know what he's capable of. Right. And so I feel like when you have a relationship with him, <clears throat> you have the privilege to ask for big things or small things, things that we need, because you know that if he says no to you, you trust his heart because you've walked in for so long with him. I also just want to say there's some serious hard words to pronounce in some of the verses that you just read. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for telling me. And that. I'm very impressed. And I'm, I'm very proud right of through. you as your friend. Yes. Good job. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's probably she didn't, close enough. She didn't skip a beat at all. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So the second way prayer is powerful is that it keeps us focused on who our source is. Mm. Um, One of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible is John 15. You might be able to tell by my (laughs) my many notes in here. Um, But it says that every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Then it says in verse four, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. And then it goes on later down that it says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified so that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. And I think sometimes maybe are we afraid to pray for fruit because Mm -hmm. it feels selfish or it's about me. And of course, the Lord's always going to keep us in check as he's good at doing. But also when we bear much fruit, it is to the Father's glory and that glorifies the Lord. And so we can ask, we can ask for that fruit, but we can't bear fruit without him. We also can't bear fruit without the pruning. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Which is like tough to think about, but Mm -hmm. it's true. Like we have to go through so much pruning and like trust that the Lord, the branches and the things that he's peeling back Mm -hmm. are for our good, even if it looks like the opposite of what we're asking for in prayer. So good. And realizing that it's even the branches that are bearing fruit that he prunes. Mm. So we could have had this fruit that's coming out of our lives and he's still like cut and we're like, but, but it's because there's even more fruit to be had and trusting him in the prayer and the asking and the pruning is all a part of the process. I think sometimes we think that only the good things are from God, but sometimes the hard things are from God too. Mm-hmm. And it's the things that he needs to, to change in us. Um, but as we remain in him and his words remain in us, it says, ask whatever you wish. I mean, as maybe a crazy person, but someone who wants to be defined by faith, I'm going to take that to heart. Mm-hmm. And if Jesus says I can, <laughs> I'm going to. And I do. And I think it's important to recognize in that, like asking whatever you wish when you are abiding in the Lord. Mm, That's a good point. What you, your desires become his. There's that verse in Psalms where it's like, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And I think thinking about the delight first, like my desires are going to change Mm -hmm. the more that I abide and delight in the Lord. And so when I ask whatever I wish, Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean like this thing you know, Lamborghinis and <laughs> yes, for things that just, you know, it's no, like, Lord, like what I, like what you wish is what I want to wish. Mm. And so I think that abiding before he says, ask whatever you wish is so crucial. And I just don't want any of our listeners to miss that. Yeah. And I think that's such a good point. And I think like you said, we can trust ourselves in our relationship with him Yeah, because we're submitting and surrendering constantly because here's the thing, God isn't always going to give us what we want or mm. what we pray for. So sometimes the biggest question of all of us as believers is what do we do when he says no? Yeah. What do we do when we have to grieve what he has chosen not to do? And so I think when you have that rooted relationship where you trust him during that process, it is like, okay, I can move forward in trust because God is the faithful one. We just have to remain in him. Yeah, good point. I think that's very good. The third way prayer is powerful is how we use it to build a relationship with him, which kind of circles back into that. And as we previously discussed, God wants to be invited in every area of our lives. So when we come to him, we come to him to seek guidance, to seek wisdom, to complain to him. I love the 
in Psalm, David says, I bring my complaints to you. Mm -hmm. Because I think, again, there's a lot of us who believe like, I can't complain to God. I should be thankful always. And we should, because scripture actually does say that as well. But we can be honest with him about, hey, man, this is really, (laughs) hey, man. (laughs) I don't say hey, man to God usually. Um, But we can bring those complaints to him and be honest as someone who is our father, who is our friend, and he cares about those things um, that are weighing us down. We confess our sins to him. We ask for forgiveness. We ask for grace. We ask for help. I think one thing that's really changed my life is that I became a Christian when I was six years old. I knew that grace was for salvation. But as someone who was kind of good, quote unquote good, I grew up obeying the rules. I like to, I like rules. I like obeying the rules. And then I came into a season when I was really, it was hard and it was bad. And I realized that grace isn't just for salvation, but it's also for changing us Mm -hmm. and that I actually can't change myself. And sometimes I think salvation, we're like, yeah, Jesus did that for me, but it's everything else is up to me. And it's not because girls, I tried (laughs) and it really is only something that God can do. And that's where we're bringing it to him. Like, I recognize that this is a problem and a pattern in my life. Please help me change it because I don't know how. And that, again, is a the beautiful thing of prayer. And to see, like, I'm sure you guys see as well, this is how I used to be, and this is how I am now. This is how I used to think, and this is how I think now. And that is through our prayer lives, through trusting God through those hardest situations in our lives. And we can bring all those things, because we're, we all carry these insecurities. And I think the Lord is asking us, like, come meet with me. Bring all of your broken pieces to me. And we start trusting him as we see him work through everything, even the hard things, even the bad things. And so as you can tell, I get really excited about prayer because I have seen God do impossible things in my life and in the lives of others. And like I said before, he has also said no, for sure. He has said no. And we went through a season of maybe five years. It felt like everything that we prayed, God said no. But he was developing something different through my prayer life. It wasn't about giving me the things that I thought I needed. It was about giving me himself. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that is the better thing. Um, but I do want to tell you one story of um, an answered prayer. And that was we were always trying to follow the Lord. Wherever he calls us, we're going to just by faith, we're going to go. And so we thought we were supposed to move to this place in California. Now we went there. Our kids were maybe like four and uh, like not even one. And we had never been there. I, well, Daniel had seen it. I had never been there and neither of us had jobs. And we just by faith packed up the (laughs) U-Haul and headed out. And we had some savings, but we got there and I was like, this is what the Lord wants. Of course, the Lord's going to provide. The Lord's going to provide. And he kept not. And we're getting less money and less money. And we're getting to the point where I remember thinking, I have one banana left. I have two kids and a husband and one banana left. And we, neither of us have jobs. And I remember that night, Daniel and I literally got on the floor in our living room and we were like, Lord, (laughs) okay, (laughs) talk about, you know, I don't know about you guys. Sometimes the Lord likes to wait till the last second Mm -hmm. to come through. Until the last banana. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) The last banana. Yeah. And um, just saying like, we, we don't have any other option. Mm -hmm. Like you really have to be God in this situation. And we got up and nothing happened (laughs) as is usual, you know, but the next day the Lord had been really teaching me about what it meant to fight back when the enemy was attacking me with doubt and anxiety Mm -hmm. and fear. And that was to just go in my room, blast worship music and praise him for who I know he was, regardless of what my circumstances were. So I'm kind of an emotional person. If if you guys don't know me, you do now. And um, Mm -hmm. I'm in my bedroom worshiping, like bawling and just like, you're still good. You're still God. You're still faithful. Even though this hurts, I don't understand. And this is hard. I missed a call from a friend of mine. And so I called her back and she was like, I was just 
feeding my son. And I really felt the Lord tell me to give you our savings. And it was, you can't see my face right now, but (laughs) my like jaw just dropped to the floor. (laughs) Yeah. And it was thousands of dollars. And I was like, what? And so she did. And I don't remember how we got it, but we were able to obviously buy food. And it, that money got us to whenever Daniel got a job. And I tell you that story because I think there's a lot of us who are in really hard situations. And don't be afraid to ask God mm-hmm. when you're desperate. I think that is we can't see God be amazing if we're never in situations where a miracle is required. And sometimes we protect ourselves and control our environment so much to the point where we take care of ourselves. We are the ones that we count on. And then sometimes we're in these situations where it's like, if you don't come through, I am up the Creek without a paddle. Mm -hmm. And I have many stories like that um, throughout my life But when you have those moments, those are like these grounding moments where you're like, I don't care what else happens. The Lord is faithful because I've seen it with my own eyes. I've felt it with my own body, you know, and I think like when you go through hard things, you think, yeah, but I love him. And Mm -hmm. at this point, I'm ruined for life. Mm -hmm. I know his goodness. Mm -hmm. I trust him and he's going to keep moving us through this. So. The Bible speaks to us on so many aspects of prayer. Even as I was researching for this episode, I thought it could be hours and hours that you could really dig into this. And I would really like challenge people to do that because there's such richness in God's word about what does it say. But for the sake of time, let's look at just three things scriptures say. So when do we pray? Now, we may have heard this verse, and it it kind of floats out there in the Christian world, and that is the pray without ceasing, which is from 1 Thessalonians 5.17. And maybe when you hear that, like me, you wonder, how is that possible? Doesn't the Lord know I have a lot of things to get done? Um, But if we pull the lens back just a little bit and we look at that in context, this command to pray continually is actually a solution for our lives when things get hard. So the verse in context says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, which we were talking about earlier, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And one commentary I was researching said this, intimately related to constant joy is incessant prayer. The only way to cultivate a joyful attitude in times of trial, uninterrupted communication with God keeps temporal and spiritual values in balance. Continually, does not mean nonstop praying. Rather, it implies constantly recurring prayer growing out of a settled attitude of dependence on God. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're constantly thinking, I can't do this without you. I can't do this without you. And I don't know about you girls. I need that. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Shay and I talk about this all the time. The phrase is dependence is the goal. Right. Um, And I just think about that constantly of like, independence is not the end result. Like Mm -hmm. dependence on the Lord is. All right, I'm going to ask you real quick though. What? does that look like for you praying without ceasing? Cause I think like we can constantly look at prayer as like, I need to be sitting in my like chair with my coffee and my right. journal. <laughs> and honestly, some mornings that is sure. what it looks like. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes it's like saying things in the car on the oh, way yeah. where I'm going. And it honestly, it is kind of crazy that we like do that <laughs> as like believers yeah. to, to say like, I'm talking to the air, but we're not, we're talking to like a living, powerful God. Yeah. So what does that look like in your life? Because I know that, you've spent time with this. Mm. Yeah. I mean, same as what you're saying is just really recognizing, I think being quick to recognize my need. Mm. So I of course fail at this all the time, but I realize that talking to him like, okay, I have a lot of anxiety right now, Lord, can you help me come up with ideas to help me feel better? Um, even (laughs) I think sometimes like a solution for that has been like, to counseling, to go to counseling. And I come up with these like tools. I feel like the Lord has provided that. Um, for me, it is like, all, like my son is at camp right now. So just when every time he pops into my head, just praying for safety. Um, I think it's just a constant, like I feel the Lord 
prompts us. Mm. Sometimes he'll bring someone that you love into your mind and you're thinking, I don't know why I'm thinking about them, but I'm just going to pray for them. Mm. Um, it is a flow as if you're sitting in a car with someone. You don't constantly talk to them if you're comfortable with them. <laughs> Otherwise, it might be awkward. Um, but it's just when something comes to your head, you say it. So I don't know if it's any different for you girls. No, I mean, I think that's really great. I really like how you kind of debunked that what like ceasing means that it's not necessarily constantly all the time, like incremental amounts of time, right. you know, right. that it's not like you took too much coffee or you drank too much coffee, <laughs> you took too much caffeine and now you can't stop talking, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, but that it's like, yeah, not necessarily the quantity of time, but like, and maybe not even like the quality, but just like listening to the promptings mm. of God when he like kind of invites you yeah. and nudges you into that conversation with him. Yeah, exactly. So we have like our focus times of prayer, like you were saying, and then that kind of praying without ceasing, I think is just like living with him, like mm. our friend. We're just That's living great. with him. I love that. So yeah, um, this is why he tells us to pray without ceasing is back to that relationship point. So the second thing we need to know about prayer is that he tells us to do it in secret. In Matthew 6, 6, it says, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So why would Jesus command this? Well, we see three reasons why this could be important. It's that when we pray in secret, we are focused on the relationship and not the performance. Mm -hmm. And a, really a lot of times growing up in the Christian world, it's very focused on performance mm -hmm. and making sure like we look good yeah. or we are appearing to be good girls. And so I think it's important for us to have a place with the Lord that nobody knows about. It's mm -hmm. very secret and unknown. Um, the second is that we are showing and confessing with our actions that we know full well it is God we need and not trying harder. Because when we're praying, we're basically saying, I need help. I need you to intervene here because I sometimes try all the things first and then pray, yeah. but sometimes we learn the hard way to do it the opposite way. And then the third is that the Pharisees prayed out loud, which is why he was speaking about this. And their reward was to be seen and to look good in front of others. But when we pray in secret and let God be our rewarder, often what we pray when for when no one sees is answered where all can. So it's just important to do it for those reasons to seek him alone. And this creates intimacy. You know, we don't have intimate relationships with everyone because it's something that we do in private. And I think that's a beautiful thing about prayer as well. So really quickly in our last few minutes together, I want to just talk about what we can pray for. Yeah. So the first thing that we do a lot is we pray for one another. And there are endless examples in God's words of things that we can pray for one another. Um, in Acts 12, 5, we see the people praying for Peter as he was in prison. So we can pray for each other's protection or freedom. Um, in James 5, 14, they're talking about healing. And it says, if, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. So we can pray for healing for people. Um, also in, in correction, uh, in Matthew 18, 19 through 20, it says, again, I say to you, if two or of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my father in heaven for where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am among them. And those are just, uh, to name a few, but we see example after example where God listened to his servants prayers on behalf of others, which I think is so beautiful. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I love when you see God do miracles after you guys have been praying for something mm -hmm. as a body, as, as a church, as a group of friends. And it, there's just nothing like the praise party that comes yeah. after that to think like God has done amazing things on behalf of our little prayers. Yeah. I want to be the person who's like, yeah, I prayed for that. Yeah, exactly. Not the person who's like, uh, I wasn't so sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To be the one that's like in faith, I'm believing for you and we're going to see this happen. And, and then also just being there with that person if that doesn't happen, but praying to God's ability, you mm -hmm. know? So it's not a religious obligation. I think that's the most important thing to mm -hmm. remember. Um, it's not a box to be checked. It's amazing privilege to bring our needs, which seems so insignificant in the grand scheme of everything God has to deal with, um, to our God because he loves us. Mm -hmm. And when we are walking with God, when we are in him, 
the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. And that's from Romans 8, 11. That's a lot of power. Mm. And sometimes I forget to live that way and to pray as though that's possible. And so let's be people who pray in that power and remember this verse, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Ashley, that was so good. I'm like fired up to pray. What about you, Shay? <laughs> I know. She <laughs> fires me up. It's it's awesome. It just feels like, yeah, like this is possible. This is livable. It's not, I feel like prayer is something that it is a spiritual discipline. So it's something that can kind of fall in that like routine category. But I feel like you really put like life into mm-hmm. it today of just helping us kind of remember like, the why behind it and also just remembering like you kept saying you know like praying to God's ability I think when you've gotten discouraged about things going on in your life it's really easy to forget that and so yeah and then you said this so early on but this was what I needed to hear today you said we can pray about anything and everything as often as possible Mm -hmm. like if I could put a sentence of like what it means to be a woman that prays without ceasing I think it's that Mm -hmm. anything and everything as often as possible why? Because we know that he's able, yeah, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And when we recognize who he is and like how powerful he is and how much he loves us, like we can come to him and ask yeah. and like trust that he listens and he is moving, um, which is just so easy to forget when mm-hmm. prayers aren't being answered or things look hard. And so I, I hope that everyone listening is just encouraged that we can, in fact, ask because we have a God who listens and yeah. moves. Um, and so as we kind of like wrap up, actually our next episode, Shay is going to be leading us in kind of talking on the other side yeah, of this point. which so, we need. Shay, yeah. what are you going to talk to us about next episode? Well, I honestly feel like this conversation, like it was a really good, just kind of like appetizer for the next <laughs> one, you know, which obviously we like put this series together intentionally, but hearing you actually teach in real time. It was just really special for me to hear this. So yeah, in the next episode, we're going to talk about the disappointment and grief associated with prayer. Mm -hmm. So like you mentioned and kind of hinted at Mm Ashley, those times where God says no, or you're praying for, you know, X and God allows Y to happen, or just kind of the overall like waiting process of, you know, I believe in the power of prayer. I'm participating in this. I'm praying about anything and everything as often as possible, but I haven't seen movement yet. Mm. And I'm almost down to my last banana. So what now, (laughs) you know? So just kind of those, those realities of past, present, and future. So Mm. that'll be the next episode. Yeah. And so if you don't want to miss the next episode, make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcast or on YouTube. And one more thing I want to tell you all about before we go, if this is speaking to you at all, or if you like Ashley suggested, want to dive more into prayer, we have a brand new study guide. And if you're on YouTube, I'm going to show it to you because it's very pretty. Shay and I actually got to work on this um, project. It's called Praying Through the Psalms, 30 Days to Uncomplicate How You Talk to God. And so this is going to take the Psalms and prayer and put them together in a really practical way. So we will link that in our show notes. Uh, But we want to thank you guys for tuning in today. As always at Proverbs 31 Ministries, we believe when you know the truth and you live the truth, it changes everything. So we'll see you for the next episode.